Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and to the next of my real-time paint along demos. Now I've done tons of these demos now and some of them are here on YouTube for free and then I have lots more over on my Patreon channel too. So if you're interested in more of this style of demo then do make sure you check me out on Patreon. But please do subscribe here on YouTube if you're just a YouTube follower it gives me so much support and helps me to continue making these videos. But let's get straight to business. Today I'm going to work on a fennec fox. So let's make a start. What I'll do before I start to paint is give you some information that you might need if you want to work along with me. Because that's the whole idea of these paint along demos. They're perfectly designed so that you can work along with me step by step. So the first thing I'll mention is the paper that I'm using. It's not a paper that I use all the time. I'm really wanting to try out Fisher 400 a little bit more. I've done a few different things on it. In fact, one of my other paint along demos of the, the B was also on Fisher 400, but I haven't tried it for something quite so soft and fuzzy before. So I'm interested to see how this paper will work. So I'm working on Fisher 400 and the piece is nine inches by nine inches, but you could work along on any other pastel paper of your choice. It really doesn't matter. Choose the paper that you want to use. Normally I use pastel mat and velour paper, I could use either one of those papers for this piece and pretty much do exactly what I'm going to do on this paper. Now the photo reference for this, I've taken some lovely photos of fennec foxes uh, recently at a local refuge and that's what I'm going to be using for this demo. Now if you join me on Patreon you'll get access to this photo reference available to download and also I'm going to release a whole photo pack for the, the patrons over there because I have so many other lovely pictures of the fennec foxes and I'll never get time to paint them all so I like to share some of those extra photographs with my patrons. I also have another photograph though of two of these little guys that I really want to paint as well. So I'm kind of using this smaller study as a, a practice run for my bigger painting. And I'm gonna make tutorials also from the bigger painting and I'll share those on my Patreon channel. But this little one is going out to all of you guys on YouTube as well. And it's really my way of thanking you for helping me to reach 30,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I'm delighted to reach that milestone. And I hope that I can continue to share this content and see my channel hopefully grow over time. So with this demo, I'm going to try and limit myself to just my Unison Animal 36 set. I'm pretty sure I've got all the colours I need within that set for this piece. I may or may not pick up some extra colours as we go, but here on screen now, I will show you the exact colour list that I've used in the piece. So most of these colours are probably from the Unison Animal set. I've used a few extra... Um, pastel pencils. I've made use of some black new pastel stick in this but this is the entire colour list that you'll need. Now you don't need the exact same materials as me. You can substitute for other colours that you've got in your own collection already. So the first part of this tutorial is going to take you step by step through how I sketched this piece out. Because it's only small um, and it's not a portrait, so I didn't have to capture a likeness or anything. I enjoyed freehand sketching this one out, and I thought that I would film that part of the process too, which I don't always do. So on Patreon, you'll get access to the photo reference. You'll also be able to download my sketch if you want to use that to get you started. But let's make a start on the tutorial then. I'm going to start with the sketching stages. So if you've already done that or you don't want to watch that part, just skip on until where I start painting. But the first part of the tutorial now is going to take you through the sketch. I hope you really enjoy watching this piece come together. And I really hope that you give it a go and you work along with me. So come on, let's make a start. All I need is a pencil, a rubber and some regular drawing paper. Now you can see that I've given myself a box to work within. I've measured out the box so that I can scale the fox accurately to my painting. Also the box acts as a little bit of a grid. Sometimes I use a grid 
whenever I'm sketching out um, especially commissioned portraits to help get the likeness. In this case, the one box is still very helpful because it gives me all of the edges and the confines of the box to measure everything against. So the first thing I've done actually is using the edge of the box. Go around and give myself some light little marks showing where things like the ear that disappears off at the top. It gives me some good markers to start with. Here I'm trying to judge where that little point of the nose should be and I'm using kind of measuring by eye up from the bottom of the piece and in from the right side and then trying to find that same point on the painting or on the drawing. So I'm really using the box to get started and I'm making bigger shapes. I'm looking for the main points and then starting to make the bigger shapes. Look at where I'm holding the pencil as I sketch at this stage. It's quite far back from the lead of the pencil. This helps you make bigger marks, more sweeping marks with the pencil and to not get too concerned with smaller details right from the start. So I have a rubber on standby, which you're going to see me use a lot during this as I make adjustments and make changes to the lines that I'm making at the moment. So it doesn't make much sense to come in early with detail before you get the, the main proportions in place. And once you start to get some proportions in place, you'll, you'll see me start to come in then heavier with the pencil. At the moment, my lines are extremely faint. I'm not leaning too heavily while I'm still unsure. But as I start to get things in place, then I can start to lean a little bit heavier so that my lines are more visible. So remaining quite loose with the pencil marks at this stage, even using straight lines rather than trying to get the exact shape of everything. This really is the equivalent of the blocking in stages in painting. I'm just trying to get everything in place and then I can start to add more detail. So if you decide to sketch this one out along with me, it's quite a tricky angle. We're kind of getting a three quarter view of the face. We can't really see the other eye. But it's a tricky angle with the nose pointed downwards and really tucked in towards the body. That was what I really wanted to capture. It's such a cosy pose. So now that I'm happier that I've got the ear in the right place, then I'm starting to think about all the little ridges of fur on the ear. As you're going to see in this tutorial, it's all about the fur and each little ridge within the fur that really tells the story of the form of the animal underneath. So I'm really looking for the main geometric shapes that I can see. Obviously the general outline of things, but then within the shapes, like here on the muzzle, just finding some lines that add some form to the muzzle. So it's the overall shape that I'm going for so that I can transfer this nice and cleanly onto my pastel paper. But at this stage, I can also start to think about the lines of light and shade as well. Give myself some guide marks there. So each little ridge within the fur really describing the shape of the head as we come up over the crown. So I won't bother going into much detail on the sketch, but it helps to add a little bit of this in because it helps me see if I've got everything in proportion. It's a bit like a little jigsaw and once you start to fill in all the gaps, everything should fit together neatly. 
So I'm just checking and rechecking all of the proportions. I haven't even come to the main features on the face until now because I want to make sure that I have the head correct first. So now I start to think about the placement of the eye. And again, it helps to get some of that structure in around the eye, first of all, what the fur is doing here. And it's at this stage I really decide that I've got my nose too high up. Once I start to try and fill in the gaps on the face, it just wasn't adding up. The eye was going to be too far away from the nose. So at any point I'm willing to make major changes in my sketch and I do all the time because I don't always get things right first time. But I'm continually measuring everything off each other and as you start to fill in the gaps sometimes you find that something doesn't add up. And even with the placement of the eye I'll have another go at that because I felt like I had put it too high up. So this is why it's good to make your lines reasonably light to begin with. You may need to change things, make alterations. But with the nose higher up and the eye further down, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So I can start to fill in more of the details plot in a few of these ridges within the fur, which will help me later on. So because we don't have an open eye to deal with in this portrait, it's really all about the fur. There is so much going on in the fur of this one. And if you're about to work along with me, then be prepared for some concentration on all of that fur. It really is complicated. And that's why I went for this little sleeping pose because it takes some of the other work out of the portrait and it lets you just focus on the fur. So now I can start to come in with a heavier line. Still making minor adjustments. This side of the face is tricky because because of that three-quarter view and um, we can't really see the other eye at all. It's just that edge of the face and then the body behind. So I want to be sure to get the shapes that I'm seeing accurately here otherwise it might look a bit off in the painting. So loads of adjustments made. I think this sketch in real time took me about 40 minutes. So it takes me a little while to do this as well. But I do enjoy getting the opportunity to do some freehand sketching once in a while. It's very helpful also in the painting process because You've already had all of this time to really study the image. And I've already had a good look at what's going on in the fur and all of that information is very helpful when I'm painting. Of course, using a grid speeds things up a lot. And you can even choose to trace this image if you just want to crack on with the painting elements. But whatever way you decide, make sure that you at least take plenty of time to really study the photo reference. And throughout the painting process, keep looking to the photo reference. So we've almost got the sketch ready to transfer onto my pastel paper. 
I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this part of the process. And I hope that it'll encourage you to give it a go. You'll learn so much from the sketching stage that you can take into your painting. And of course, on my Patreon channel, I will give you the photo reference to download, a gridded version of the photo reference, so you can draw out your own grid and use that for extra guidance. I'll also give you a scan of this sketch so that you can use it to transfer, if you'd like, onto your pastel paper. So that is the sketch complete. Now I take it off my drawing board. And I'm going to cover the back of this with black pastel. You can see that I'm using the pastel on its side. And then be sure to rub the pastel all over the paper like this. Get rid of all the excess sitting loose on the surface and give it a nice even covering. Now that's ready to tape onto my pastel paper, which of course is the Fisher 400. I tape that onto my drawing board. I've cut the paper actually at 10 inches square, and then that gives me some space to leave this little border when I'm taping the paper onto the board. Just getting it nice and flat. And then I'll tape this on top and use my sketch to transfer onto the paper. So I make a little mark first of all and then just quickly check that it's coming out on the paper that I can see my lines. So it's coming out very faintly on the Fisher 400 but as long as I can see the line at all then I'll go over it a bit more at the end. So a faint line is enough. Then I take a black pastel pencil and I give myself the final sketch before starting the colour work. So by using all pastel related products to create this outline, these dark lines will disappear into my painting. So be sure to use pastel or pastel pencil to create your outline. That way you won't see your lines through your painting. So we're now completely finished with this little sketch. But think about storing this somewhere safe because I keep all of my sketches in a, If I'm ever reusing this pose again, I can always apply a little bit more pastel and go again. But let's make a start on the colour work. The first thing that I'm going to do though is using the black new pastel stick. And I'm going to block in the very darkest areas and in particular this area just to the top. So I want the background to be really dark. The lighting in the photo reference is so dramatic and I want to try and replicate that. So it will involve quite a lot of pure black times, but I will probably bring in a little bit of colour as well over the top of this, even this darkest black area right at the top, just to add maybe a bit of warmth to it. So I hope that my audio will come out clearly because this is a much noisier paper <laughs> to the papers I'm used to. So hopefully you're going to be able to hear me in the parts where I'm making quite a racket on this Fisher 400. So 
So I'm literally putting quite a lot of pastel onto the paper and I'm letting it come down in between the hairs on the back. I do trust this paper that it will actually take um, light colours coming out over the top of this and I need to make it really soft on those edges so that should still work okay. And just to help me balance the picture out a bit I'm also going to block in this bottom shadow. I won't need to lean here very much and if I do I will probably leave this little strip that's in sunlight until the very end so I can always lean my hand here if I'm if I'm working on the hair or something but I don't think it should get in the way. I just think it's going to help having that dark top and bottom um, like how I see it in the end composition. And it really is jet black in at the very um, back end of this shadow area. That will really be my technique for much of this piece, looking for the darkest values first and getting those blocked in early on. So <laughs> this is going to be interesting because this is Fisher 400. It feels a little bit like a very fine grit sandpaper. I don't know if I'm going to be able to blend all of this piece with my fingertips. So I'm probably you're probably going to see me experiment a little bit. Um, just to save my fingertips a little bit. So I've just picked up one of my little soft tools. It's already quite uh, damaged. I'm about to put a fresh one on, so I don't mind getting it uh, jet black doing this job. But I think I can save my fingertip having to rub this larger bit of surface. So that's something to consider if you're using one of the rougher sanded papers. They do feel a bit rougher than pastel mat for example and of course velour but velour is just a soft fuzzy dream um, to run your fingers over so yeah this is much much different. I would liken this probably to the finer grits in the UART range. Um, Fisher 400 as far as I know only comes in 400 grit but I know that UART do quite a few different choices. Um, but the main thing that annoys me a little bit about the UART paper is the curl of the paper. I feel like I should probably mount that paper onto something firm. Um, whereas the Fisher 400 doesn't really curl too much. It's not so bad. So that was good. It saved my fingers doing the first layer at least. I think on this paper from before, once I got a couple of layers of pastel actually on the paper, things started to move around much easier and it was much easier also to blend a little bit. But I'm definitely using a lighter touch. Uh, anytime you do see me using my fingertips like I will here, I'm absolutely not pressing on the paper. I'm definitely using a much lighter touch than normal. So I'm going to be mindful of that while I'm working on this because I do remember working on UART for the first time and I just blended as normal and it was painful afterwards. So I'm going to be more careful on this. When I did the, the B demo, um, I also used Fisher 400 and I was more careful with my blending and that was fine. So, But there's more blending in this piece. It's such a fuzzy, hairy uh, composition. So we'll see how I get on, but it definitely doesn't feel as bad here where I've got a couple of layers um, as it does on this, you know, this fresh paper. So I think I should be good for the blending of the fur with my fingertips mostly, hopefully. So I'm just going to gently rub a bit of that 
in over the edges that's really what I want to um, have it really softened around the edges so that the the paper can nicely accept the color that will be on the fox so I'll probably focus on um, this top section of the head first I'll perhaps block in these areas on the body though um, and maybe even over here as well because it is actually sitting behind the head at this point so it would be good to get those areas blocked in early on but I think I'll continue with the black for just a little bit um, I'd like to pick out some of the darkest areas early on and also the black is quite dirty to work with it's much much easier to clean um, a black area that you've put some lighter colors close to and you know the dust will make your black area go a bit lighter it's much easier to clean that and make it dark again than it is to clean black pastel off a white area or a light area at least so that, that's one of the reasons I like coming in with the darks first um, and then just to touch them up throughout the process it means that you're not getting all of this loose dark pastel pigment flying around um, and landing on your light areas it's going to really muddy the whole thing so a really soft touch when I'm doing any kind of rubbing in here um, and yeah I've definitely got to keep that in mind for this piece or I'm gonna have no fingerprints left um, I think it's mostly this one that I use but you can see from where the dirt is so far that I do use most of my fingers for the blending so the first brown color that I picked up for the background there that was BE6 and that's a color that I'm probably going to use quite a lot in this piece it's a lovely warm rich but super dark brown and of course I'm limiting myself to just the unison animal set for this and I'm pretty confident that I can tackle most of what is ahead I'm gonna shout out the the names of the colors as much as I remember to do it um, and I may or may not have to pick up another color or two I'm not 100% sure yet but I'll try and stick to just the animal set it's the sort of thing that the animal set was designed for so let's give it a go it would be nice if I can use that limited palette and hopefully achieve this warm glowing light so I think what I'll do now is get this little area blocked in um, perhaps this area over here these soft edges that are the furthest away So it's quite in the shadows over on this side. I'm picking up BE21. Um, I don't want to come straight in with the color that it's really going to be in the end, um, as it's a little bit lighter than this. And I really want uh, all of the fur to have depth to it. So try to avoid just using one color in any area and I'm just giving that a bit of a blend in I'm going to deal with these edges I'm not quite sure what way I'm going to make them soft enough but we'll see so this is BE9 
So everything back here is really, really soft. We're not looking for any detail back here. It's going to be all smudged together. And this paper allows a really nice amount of blending actually. I'm quite pleased with uh, how much you can blend and mix on this paper. And it will take a good number of layers of pastel. This is BE14. Perhaps a little bit too warm for back here. A little bit of A19 might mix in enough. So whatever colour you put on, if you plan on blending it in, expect that colour to mix with whatever you've put underneath. Now you can avoid that happening by not blending. So often my top layers, the top marks that I put on, won't get blended very much because I want that colour of mark to be there and I don't want it to mix. But when I'm creating anything that's like this, like really out of focus, then I can afford to blend quite a lot. And I'm just using a little bit of pastel pencil. You can see that it's dragging some of the darker pigment down into this area, which of course I don't want. But wait till you see just how easily that blends away again. This finer point obviously is going to help me soften the very ends of this. And then I can very lightly blend it out. So it's a really soft edge I'm looking for and the ease of doing this part really will depend on which paper you're using. If it's one of these sanded papers, this blending happens really easily. It um, takes barely any pressure to get an area to mix together. Whereas if you're using velour, um, it can be a little bit longer before you're able to really soften and blend areas. So that's the main difference uh, of many of the papers, how easily blended the pastel pigment is on there. So that's the reason I want to get areas like this done early on because other parts really sit on top of this. And then over here, the pigment is going to be really pure white in this area. I may wait and do that section um, when I'm working on this ear because this is going to be difficult to keep clean throughout the whole painting. That's going to be tricky. So I'll continue working over this side and kind of work my way over along the top um, of the head towards this other ear. And at that point then I can work on this soft edge.
So you definitely will see me make use of some pastel pencil throughout this. A lot of the time when I've got a little soft edge to create, it's the pastel pencils that will help me create the very ends of the hairs. So I can do a lot of it with the bigger pastel sticks. But then it's over to the pastel pencils at some point for a bit of refinement. So I'll take some BE6 and do a little bit of blocking in just behind this ear, so towards the top of the head here. It does dip down right into black in some of these areas. And that's what I'm really going for in this piece, the dramatic light and shade. And if you want to capture really dramatic light and shade, then you need to really think about the contrast, your total values within the painting. So we're going to talk about that as I go. That and my colour choices. But a lot of this will be talking about those tonal values to make the difference between light and shade really believable in the painting. But really, overall, it's quite dark over this side. And while I'm working, I'll often have my photo reference open in Photoshop. And I'll use the editing tools to lighten the photo reference so that I can see a bit more detail into the shadow areas doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to paint that area much lighter, but at least it lets me see the structure under there, what's going on. So I'll probably do that in this piece, just to get a better look over here when it comes to adding more detail. I just want to give that a bit of a smudge into the paper, let it cover as much as it wants to. The darker the better over here. So your darks are really important. It's something that you, we tend to overlook it a little bit in the start. And I think that's partly because we're usually scared to go too dark in case that's a mistake and it's hard to fix. But really with soft pastel, if you're using just the pencils, then maybe you need to think about working slightly differently as you don't get quite as much coverage as you do with the soft pastel but if you're using the softer sticks you can absolutely work dark to light it's very similar to oil painting in some ways or at least some styles of oil painting Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm just trying to get this area blocked in a little bit more. Um, and I'm using kind of the direction of the fur with my, even with my rough, rough marks here. happy enough to put lots of dark pigment over on this side and just really make a start on darkening it down. That's one slight drawback to working on the Fisher 400 is the fact that it only comes in this light uh, sort of cream colour and I don't really mind that. I don't mind having to darken down sections. I know that I've got good enough blacks to make jet black where I want to. Um, but it is a little bit limiting that you've only got the one paper colour choice as I really do love a mid-tone to work from. But there is something that I do really like about the uh, Fisher 400 and that's why I'm having this other go at it. I've used it a couple of times now and again mostly on smaller projects. So I'm interested to experiment a bit more with this paper. And I'm really not sure how long this demo is going to be. You probably know better than me at this moment, if you've seen the videos all released. But I often don't have too good an idea how long something's going to take. Some projects catch you out. So I'm thinking this might be a shorter painting to do, but I also have no idea because it's also working on a different paper and yeah, just dealing with different things happening. So I'll make a start along the top of the head. I'm coming in with a little bit of warmth first because there is some but it's also quite um, light toned up here and then we do dip into a bit of shadow as it comes on around. So I'm just trying to create this little um, light area along the back of the head here. Now another plus to the uh, Fisher 400 is that it does accept pastel pencil really well. Um, you can come in with some smaller highlights and things and even the light colours go on reasonably well on top of the dark. So I've got a light grey colour of Faber-Castell here. There's just a few little glints of light coming around here and that's actually going to help this edge of the ear stand out. So it's important that I do put this little light patch over here. But then it does kind of warm up as we come around across the top of the head. And you will also see me making use of a General's, uh, it's called a Pastel Chalk and this is their white. It's number 4414, this is the one that 
I use a lot these days. And it's a very nice bright white pencil. And that's very helpful for areas like this along the top of the head. Apologies for any flies buzzing through the footage. I'm trying to keep them out, but it's one of those days where they just seem to be everywhere. So really light touch as you're dragging little ends of hairs out into the dark background. And I'm not going too far across with the white pencil because then we do dip into shadow. So we're also going to see some usage of grey 8 in this piece. One of my favourites and it's always very handy to pick up when you need some shadow tones. I do use it a lot. So I'm really looking to the edges of all of this first. Helps me get that top edge going and then I can work my way down from that. So yeah, it's always the first little bit that seems to take the longest because what I'm trying to do here is also figure out the order of the layers and what colours I actually need to create the effects that I'm seeing because I don't instantly know what colours I'm going to need. It takes a bit of thought and I do try to pick out a palette before I start working but it doesn't always say, it doesn't always mean that I get the colours right. So we'll see how I get on with my animal set. That should help me a lot. This is A27. I'm just looking at some colours on this ear now. I'm jumping around a little bit but that's why because I'm trying to figure out what order I need to put all of these colours down in to create the effects. And I can only really take an educated guess and then get some pastel pigment on the paper. What I'm trying to do is at least get a similar tonal value to the colour I need because then I can always uh, adjust the colour do love painting very dramatic light. This is going to be really, really nice, hopefully, when it's done. So I'm just having to think now, will I continue on with this ear? Maybe it would be good to experiment a little bit on this ear and uh, see what I can bring over into the top of the head then, because it's quite a tricky area here on the top of the head. It would be good to get some colour on here and see how it looks. So this is NE1, one of the natural earth colours from the set. So I'm really just blobbing on a bit of colour in patches here and there until I sort of figure out the exact colours that I need to use to build up. A 
it can also be helpful just to get a little sense of another edge here. So I'm just going to pick out this lighter edge. I'm using A19. This part probably isn't quite as bright as the white area just in here. And it certainly isn't once we get down into this section it gets a bit darker. So really pay attention to the colours of the edges of things. That's a good place to start. I think that's why I like to start with the edges of things. It really shows you how the light is changing as it comes around the subject matter. And yeah, I think that's just a little bit too much orange in it for much of this. That's my BE14 there. I think it's just a little bit too orange. I may be picking up another light, um, more yellowy tone, I think. Just for certain areas. Just mixing a little bit of it in. Using this ear to sort of experiment on um, because I may be able to mix together the uh, the colours a little bit just to augment how much orange there is in that part. And I think actually what's going to help a lot of the time is A19. So yeah, pretty much just mixing directly on the paper. I think I need to get more of the dark tones in around this uh, crease between the ear and the head. This is BE36, another dark brown tone that I will likely use quite a lot in this piece. So I'm happy enough to smudge that first layer a good bit um, and that's going to mix the colours together firstly but also cover the surface of the paper and then I can allow for some detail in the later layers. So I'm going to block in a little bit of this white behind as that's going to help me to see the the values, um, how dark I need to go along this edge of the ear for it to stand out against this white area. Sometimes even though it's in the early stages, the lighter areas can provide a lot of um, information about the tonal values that you need to use. Sometimes just getting a lighter area blocked in lets you know how dark you need to go in other areas. So it's a constant process of comparing different areas to each other. So I'm in with A19 here first. I 
and perhaps even some um, A31 or this happens to be A32 that I'm using. It'll be A31 for you if you're using the animal set. They're both very very similar. I couldn't find any A31 in my trays. It's clearly something I've used a lot and need to order some. So I'm also going to lay down a little bit of grey eight as we come round this corner. We've got a shadow line across here or it might be the edge of the face as it disappears up. I wasn't too sure from the photo reference so in areas like this I need to pay particular attention to the shapes because it is a part of the face. I'm just not sure from the lighting um, if this shadow line is also the edge of the face. I'm not sure. So I've pretty much just got to make it like it is in the reference because it doesn't look wrong in the photo or anything. I just can't quite figure out um, what that edge is if it's just the shadow line. So I'm pretty much um, putting a base coat where the white is going to be. I don't want to put my white straight onto the paper. It's hard to get white to shine out brightly when you put it straight on. For smaller areas it's okay but when it's going to be in a large area like this. And also I want to add a colour that adds some definition to the white area. It's not solid bright white everywhere. So it applies much smoother, much cleaner because I've got a layer of colour already on the paper and I can also let some of that colour shine through. And you do need to start being careful about how dirty your fingertips are at some point in a painting like this on the sanded papers. Um, it's obviously bad to have such dirty fingers and be working on a light area. So I probably will need to uh, pause and give my hands a bit of a clean. I normally try to save one fingertip that's cleaner than the rest that I can use in my light areas but I have not done that today. so. I will have to clean them before I blend any of this. And then just like on the other side I can also use a bit of pastel pencil just to help uh, drag some of this pigment up. And again, it doesn't matter too much that I'm dirtying right in here. It should all mix and blend a little bit. It does get a bit darker as we come over here, so I'm fine with that.
So I'm just using the white pencil there actually to blend a little bit. Um, just over where it's brighter here. And then switching to the light grey again. Work a little bit more on this edge. It's really wispy and soft along this edge, so I am going to soften all of this. Even with more of a tap action than the rubbing, uh, you can soften the edge in without mixing too much and then just keep working with the pastel pencil around the edge. So I'm back with slightly cleaner fingertips and I can give some of this a bit of a rub into the paper. So I can touch up this white area later and make it brighter. It's just quite helpful to have some idea of it in at this stage to see how dark I need to go with this edge of the ear. So this color is BE9. Again, I'm just looking for the edges of things. There's a lovely contrast between the lighter blue tone of this area and the lovely warmth of this part of the forehead. So I think a big key to creating fur on this paper is going to be in the blending. I'm going to have to really soften my marks if I want them to look soft and fuzzy.
So again, I'm still just experimenting with laying down different colours. Grey 8 there, a bit too dark for this little edge. I've got my A31 instead. So we're in a little bit of shadow in the first part of the ear. Comes up into the sunlight towards the tip of the ear. So yeah, it's proving quite a tricky combination of colours to try and capture the different areas on the fox. But that's what I'm going to persevere and try and do because that's what's going to create, hopefully, the lovely light and shade within the piece. So I'm going to come back to my darks. If in doubt, come back to the darks and continue blocking in. I've got a good start made on this ear though. So this is any one. See if I can pick out a few more dark areas on the face. Again, happy to mix the different areas together a little bit, smudge things together more. Now we do have a particularly dark area here on the forehead. So still when it's dark enough I will use pure black. looking for the darkest spots. And it would be good to get some of this area blocked in because I want to leave this lovely bright edge of this ear until I've got some of this hair blocked in. So it would be good to be working on uh, that part of the forehead so that I can work the other ear. I do try to do things in some kind of order. It doesn't always happen. But it's normally trying to build things up from background to foreground. So when I layer things up, I try and layer them up how they are in the photo reference. So I think that this A31, or in my case A32, is going to come in very useful in this fur.
So some parts of the fur look pretty warm in temperature and then other parts are looking quite cool. So that's why I'm using some of that additional color in the fur. That's really has a bit of a cooling effect in amongst all of the uh, brown earth, orange yellow tones. So there's some really dark creases amongst the fur and it's good to try and make the dark ones really dark because it's this sort of thing that shows the actual depth of the fur. This little animal's got a really thick coat even on the head where quite often the hair is usually shorter on most animals but in this case this little animal's got quite long hair all over even longer on the body. So it's pretty dark inside this ear until where it comes around and gradually comes into the sunlight. So I'm just blocking in a bit of BE6. I will also pick up BE23. And then perhaps a little bit of grey eight as well. So it doesn't matter that this is a bit of a mess at this stage. That's okay because you can just keep reworking to a certain extent with pastel. If you work with a reasonably light touch then there's still a lot of space on the paper to accept more pastel at this stage. Thank you. 
So there's little ridges throughout the fur and they're pretty important as they really describe the form of the animal underneath. So the fur isn't just the outer coating, it's really describing what's going on underneath. So just blocking in with the darker colours some of the more structural marks, which those dark marks really are, they are a great help to map out the fur. This is RE9. Maybe a bit too bright for up here, but I'm also going to blend it in. So it's really patchy looking at the mint. It's a tricky little colour scheme to figure out. And I'm really just dropping colours in and experimenting at the minute. And it's pretty handy having the animal set in front of me to experiment with as it gives me some palette or some uh, limit rather than being faced with all of the pastel colours at once. That's what I like about sometimes limiting your palette. Seeing can you mix together or create the colours that you're looking for.
So we're in the shadow area of this ear. That's why I've got grey it in my hand. So you can see that you need a pretty light touch when it comes to the blending on this paper. It's pretty reactive, it wants to mix together very easily so I'm happy enough for that to happen on these lower layers um, but certainly later on I'll be doing less blending to try and get some of the details. So this is BE14, the lighter of the brown earths in the set. So that's really helping to start and warm things up. So I'm kind of losing the dark crease lines that I made initially and that's okay because I can come back in and re-darken some of these um, little creases in the fur.
and I'm also trying to broaden my marks a little bit just so that I'm not going to get into such tiny detail. You can really use the pastel stick sometimes to get as small a mark as you need. So I've got to try and separate this ear from the fur behind it. It's going to be pretty bright so I'm just darkening down a little bit along this edge before adding in the bright edge of the ear. because I can afford to go pretty bright on this ear. I may come in just first of all with a little bit of the additional colour. Just aiming for the very tip of the ear and coming around that bend. And then it can really turn into bright white as we come round into the direct light. So this is one of the areas on the painting that we can use pure white and be quite heavy handed about it as well. And of course it's always handy if you've started to break down your pastel sticks a little bit. Quite a small piece of pure white I'm using here. Very useful as often I'm doing um, important highlights with the white. So that's a good colour to have in lots of smaller shapes that you can make different sized marks with. So there's a lot going on with the form and the shape of the fur on the top of the head, this part of the ear. All of this is pretty uh, ruffled looking fur and it's pretty tricky so that's why I'm just taking my time. Um, I'm really looking at the photo reference a lot. Not getting carried away doing anything just on the painting, especially not at this stage when I still really need the photo reference to figure this out. And I will likely pick up this blue colour of pastel pencils a few times throughout. It's great when I've put some grey 8 down at just um, wisping those edges out. They're not too far off the same colour. That's what I tend to do with my pastel pencils. It's often colours that are very similar to the colours that I'm using in soft pastel sticks.
So this is RE9. And then I think we need to start and uh, cool this whole area as well because there is a, a lot of shadow cast on this side and I'm hoping that this additional color will help to calm a lot of this down as the highlight color on it. But I'm still in the experimental stages with the colour on this one. I'm still not entirely sure of the direction I'm going um, in terms of building up the colour of the fur. I think what I'm starting to figure out is that although the brown earth colours that I have are a little bit warm, they've got a little bit too much orange in them, I think I can still use them, especially if I'm using them along with that additional colour, or both additional colours in fact, A19 and A31 or A32, whichever you've got. And this is BE21. So it really is as if I'm doing a lot of mixing of colour on the paper and I suppose that's exactly what I am doing. So if you're limited with a smaller number of pastels it's a good thing to know how to experiment with the colours that you do have and see can you mix colours to get them close. find that you really can think of pastel 
sometimes a little bit like oil painting. So this is my additional light additional color and I think that this over the top of those orange tones will tone it down enough This little fox has such muted colours all over. They're not really brightly coloured in any way. And it's always these muted colour schemes that are a little bit trickier. But as we get a little bit more pastel on the paper, I can start to make my marks a little bit more definitely um, and along with the flow of the fur, not just smudging everything together like in the first layers. I can actually start making some marks that resemble fur at this stage. And then just a very light rub over the top this time, not trying to mix too much just trying to soften the marks. So yeah, if I sit back from this and I squint, this top part of the ear now starts to look kind of like the colors I'm going for. So it just takes a little bit of time. So this is grey 10 from the set as well. I'm going to try just a little bit of this through here. So I've kind of lost the um, the definition here which isn't a problem at all because I can come in at any point and start to plot that out again a bit better. and it can really help me to use the pencil and bits like that just to soften the marks really well and finally
So I'm really using the pastel pencil. This is the light grey colour. Just to tidy up this area. What makes this trickier as well is having the dark background of course. It makes it harder to keep all of this separate and clean from each other. So for now I'm just going to continue battling with this middle section on the forehead. Once I get this area looking a little better, I'll probably start to work my way in from this side of the face. I'm not ready to start here yet because as you can see I am actually leaning my hand a little bit. I would prefer to get a bit more detail added on the forehead area.
so far I'm kind of enjoying the Fisher 400. It's again very different from what I'm used to painting on especially to achieve fur. I'm used to the paper kind of helping me a little bit. Um, the velour paper certainly wants to look soft and that is a plus when you're painting fur of course. Pastel mat is a little bit different. You've got to work on that paper to make it look soft. Um, but this is a little bit different again, so I'm still finding my way um, just at getting the marks that I actually want. It's still looking a little bit of a mess to me. But I just keep working because there's still plenty of space on the paper to accept more layers. And of course there's going to be a lot of the uh, final details done with some pastel pencil too. So I'm by no means trying to achieve the finished detail with the marks that I'm making at the minute. So just looking for any defining little curves or shapes in between the ridges. It's tricky though and I keep losing my place when I look back at the photo reference. Of course the good thing with this being a wildlife piece is that I don't have to get it exactly like the photo reference. It's not quite the same as when I'm doing a pet portrait for example and I really want to capture everything exactly how that pet should um, look to their uh, humans. But with wildlife it's a little bit different. I find that there's a little bit more freedom in the likeness that you've got to get to the animal. So these areas will be greatly helped when I start to come in with some pastel pencil and just darken down these little ridges again because I've kind of lost them at the minute but I'm, I'm trying to block in a bit of colour so I don't mind losing the dark colours a little bit.
So I've picked up the brown pencil here instead of black just to not be quite as stark as black just in trying to feather the edges a little bit just really shaping these little sections on the forehead but there are a few areas that really do call for jet black So this is A7 from the set, a lovely light yellowy tone. I think that's going to come in useful in some of these sunlit areas. So it's quite a big chunky stick and where I'm trying to aim it is just right at the tips of the little hairs. So perhaps I should have a look and see do I have any smaller pieces of this pastel colour. That might be more sensible. So yeah, maybe it's a good time to start and work some of this ear. This section here actually surrounding this ear, both top and um, bottom of the ear, is probably the most complicated part of the whole piece. There's a lot going on here, that's why I'm just taking my time. Really trying to choose colours wisely. I'm still really experimenting with the colours. It's definitely a strange palette. It's a strange colour of an animal. And that on top of a different paper, which I'm just not used to, makes this uh, an interesting experience. but it's good to experiment. 
And I'm glad that I've tried to limit myself to my Unison palette because hopefully, hopefully, if I can create this without picking up extra colours, it should really show that even when you don't have quite the right colour for something, that you can generate it from the colours that you already have. So I'm never one to tell people not to buy more, more pastel colours, but you can do a lot with a limited palette as well, so don't be put off. So I'm just going to work on the little hairs down the inside of the ear and I think I need to start off with grey 8. And then we do come around the corner into the sunlight. It's quite muted around this little bend in comparison to the brightness of the hairs that we're going to add here. But it's still a highlight that's pretty bright. Um, I'm testing out a little bit of A19 just here. I think something like that kind of brightness is probably going to work. So that's really how I'm figuring out what colours to use here, just by experimenting, putting a little bit on, seeing what that looks like. I don't automatically know the correct colours to use all the time. When something's new to me, it takes me a little while to figure it out, perhaps. So there's just some gorgeous light and shade down this section. I'm spending a lot of time uh, just kind of looking at the photo reference at this stage. So this part is obviously quite bright hairs, but in between those hairs we've got reasonably dark contrast. So I'm just adding that in first before putting any light hairs on top. 